I've always found it odd that when so many people show a body of work over their life, quit here, quit there, start here, stop there, yet they can put up a YouTube video, they could put a social media account. Next thing you know, they're an expert in everything. And yet, if you knew them previous to that, they have zero body of evidence to show their work or examples of success. So in this episode of the Seven Figure Squad Wealth and Wisdom Series, we're gonna share words of wisdom from Proverbs chapter 16. I'll discuss in this episode of the Seven Figure Squad starting three, two, one, let's go. What's cracking everybody? Money smart guy, Matt Zapala, healing to you from Dallas, Texas. And once again, we find ourselves in a series of Wealth and Wisdom, Proverbs chapter 16, episode 16, where we unpack an episode a week, a proverb every week for 31 straight weeks, and we're now on our 16th episode. And uh, my goal and intention is for you not to just listen to what I have to say about Proverbs chapter 16 and take it as whatever you take it as. Don't take it as gospel. Listen, I'm just a man reading the Bible, and I'm not a pastor. I don't have a doctor in divinity. I don't have a college degree. Listen, just don't take my word for it. Don't allow me just to read the Bible for you. My goal and intention is for you to start discovering what King Solomon, God's word, has to share with you and through you what he has to share with you about making better decisions with your finances, with your family, your business, and your career. By the way, if you think our videos have been helpful, please consider liking this video. If you watch a couple of our videos already, please consider hitting subscribe. Okay, let's get into it. Law of navigation. So the Bible of reference that I use, the Bible of reference that I use is a John Maxwell leadership Bible because I love how he just shares his interpretation of the Bible too as well. He shares his perspective of leadership from a leadership lens interpreting the Bible. And as we start here in Proverbs 16, the first verses of Proverbs chapter 16, verses 1 through 3, is foundational to the rest of this chapter. And it reads like this. To humans belong the plans of the heart. But from the Lord comes the proper answers of the tongue. All a person's ways seem pure to them, but motives are weighed by the Lord. Commit to the Lord whatever you do, and He will establish your plans. So oftentimes I hear a lot of people say, well, you know, follow your heart. Follow your heart. Listen, many times I followed my heart. It's never sat well with me. Why? Because I've always felt that my heart, just like any muscle, tires out. I feel sometimes that my, even my own heart is laid with good thoughts and sometimes bad thoughts and good intentions and bad intentions. And so what drives me? What cleanses me? What makes sure I'm making the right decision for myself? So I shouldn't just tap into my heart. Actually, I need to tap into my spirit. And that's what King Solomon says here. So in John Maxwell's Law of Navigation, there's three things that this law teaches us to do. It teaches us to check the source of whoever you're listening to, check sources of wisdom, and wisdom is defined as knowledge times experience. Somebody can be very knowledgeable about something but have very little experience, but that's not wisdom though. Or somebody can have a lot of experience with something but not have a lot of knowledge because they could have been doing some of the same things over and over and over and figure out later on, it was wrong. So the question exists. If you thought you were doing something right, but later found it was wrong, what would you like to do about it now? So if that's you and you need to reframe the way you make your decisions, please put in the comment section below, I am checking the source of my wisdom. I am checking the source of my wisdom. Put in the comment section below. Second thing is check out the motives. Whoever's coaching or guiding you, check out their motives. For example, this YouTube channel, we don't advertise, this is all organic growth. And guess what? I have not a book to sell you. I don't have a course to sell you. I don't have a mastermind to sell you. I'm not trying to recruit you into anything. I'm not trying to sell you anything. I'm, all I'm doing is selling you and pointing you in the right direction how to have better decision in life. And the book that can give you the greatest reference in order to do so happens to be, in my experience, the values and principles taught in the Bible. In this instance, from the Proverbs books, chapter 16. Why? Because it's written by the wisest and richest king who ever lived named King Solomon. Third thing, check the outcome that we are pursuing. What are we after? So when you're making a decision, what is it that you're after? Is it success? Is it money? Is it prosperity? What is it that you're after? Filter by the first couple of, uh, couple of thoughts here. And John Maxwell talks about the five P's of navigation. As you're navigating through life, your decisions, your, your journey through people and opportunities and doors that open and doors that close. Number one, he talks about God's process. God plans unfold for you over time, not instantly. So if you're not happy with where you're at today, Ask yourself, well, God, what type of process, what step in the process do you have me in right now? What season do you have me in right now? Am I in the planting season? Am I in the cultivating season? I'm in the harvesting season. What season do you have me in, God? Second one, purpose. God wants to accomplish things. Yes, but guess what? He can't do it by himself. He needs to do it through who? 
through you. God wants to do some amazing things and magnify himself through you. Number three, potential. God will use your gifts. God will use your passion. God will use whatever you've been created with. God will use you for a special purpose. Number four is prioritize. God will ask you, with all the things you got going on, and you feel that you have an abundant opportunity, and abundant opportunities in front of you, listen, God will ask you to adjust your time, energy. I'll give you a quick story. When I first started following the Lord, I first started reading the Bible. I was 30 years old. And uh, the church had me in the church every day. Now, I lived out a distance away from the church. And the church we had there on Monday, the church we had there on Tuesday, the church we had there on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Listen, I was at church all the time. And I thought to myself, my evenings, my family, my business, everything I wanted to do, I was just flooded with things that have to do with the church. So now I felt it deep inside my heart, deep inside my spirit, that God was going to use me in a mighty and powerful way. I don't know what it was, but all I knew in the meantime, I was broke. In the meantime, I wasn't making ends meet. In the meantime, I was also broke with time with my own children. I'm spending more time with people's children, other children, instead of my own. So I need to prioritize my time and energy. And since then, although I'm not a perfect father, I'm just looking for ways to get better and better all the time, I spend more time and energy investing in building my family to create relationship with my family. Again, things made out because family's the way it is sometimes, right? Just because I didn't find time for my family didn't mean that I should pour all my time into church and ministry because my first ministry, in my opinion, is my family. If that's you and you're finding yourself having to change your priorities, please put this affirmation in the comment section below. I am seeking to adjust my time and energy. I am seeking to adjust my time and energy. And last but not least, proceed. God will eventually require you to finally act. You get loaded up with information, you get loaded up with knowledge, you get loaded up with people around you. Now you have to do something great. One book I want you to definitely read and pick up is 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership by John Maxwell. Okay, so let's jump right into it. Now, I found five ways that rich people put their heart in check. So therefore, they can make better decisions. Let's look at Proverbs chapter 16, verse 5. It reads like this. The Lord detests all the proud of heart. Be sure of this. They will not go unpunished. And that has a lot to do with pride. Are you prideful about your decision? Not that you're, you have taken pride in your work, but you're prideful in your decision. Are you upright, too cool for school, can't take instruction? Number two, is it your plan versus God's plan? Let's look at chapter 16, verse 9. It reads like this. In their hearts, humans plan their course, but the Lord establishes their steps. So you got a thought, you got an idea, you got an inspiration. God gave you a dream. Awesome. Did you check with God what my next steps are? Did you seek yourself? Wise counsel, Proverbs chapter 15 talks about wise counsel around you because when you have wise counsel, you have a multitude of counselors around you, your plans will then succeed. Number three, pride comes before the fall. Again, this is a condition of the heart. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 18, it reads like this. Pride goes before destruction, a haughty spirit before a fall. Sometimes even in an argument. By the way, my wife and I, we realized that we had an area that we needed to improve on. It wasn't our finances, it wasn't sex, it wasn't family and kids. No, it was communication. And even us, we still invest time in ourselves with a counselor to coach us and give ideas and concepts. Just as we learn money, just as we learn business, we're taking concepts on how to better communicate and have had a greater intimacy in our conversation and our relationship with one another. Number four, wise in heart. Really? What do you mean wise in heart? Chapter 16, verse 23, it reads like this. The hearts of the wise man makes their mouths prudent and their lips promote instruction. So otherwise, instead of making a hasty decision, sometimes people make an emotional decision. Oh, this is not for me. I don't know anything about that. Listen, I made a hasty decision when a guy gave me his business card to get involved in the money business. When I first was introduced to the financial services industry. He gave me his business card. And I kept his business card in my breast pocket in my uniform for three months. You know why? Because I was making a hasty decision. I tell myself, I don't have a college degree. I don't have a background in finance. I don't have a background in business. I don't deserve to be in that industry. All the while, the answers to my prayers were in that business card. Thank God this guy followed up with me because I would have never called him. So how many times have you seen somebody give you an opportunity to change your life and yet, you're like, 
and feel indifferent about it. Is that you talking to you or is that God talking to you? Because if it's you talking to you, you let yourself down. But if God was talking to you and you seek the wisdom in your heart and spirit, guess what? Now you know what next steps to take. And number five, hunger will drive you. What? Hunger. So it's not the heart, it's the stomach. Let's look at Proverbs chapter 16, verse 26. It reads like this. The appetite of laborers works for them. Their hunger drives them on. Now, that could be a literal thing. I mean, if you're hungry and say, listen, you can't go eat unless the work is done, guess what you're going to do? If you're physically hungry and somebody says, you can't go eat until you get the job done. Well, guess what? Guess what you're not motivated to do? You're motivated to get the job done. So you can go eat. So what's the, another aspect to this, if it was not literal? If you're stinking comfortable and you lost hunger, you lost fire in your belly, hunger in your heart, you're not going to change much. You're not going to do much. God can't use you. He wants to use you, but God can use you if you don't have ambition, you don't have hunger, you're content, meaning that you don't want to improve anymore, you don't want to contribute any longer. Oftentimes we, in the financial services industry, talk about retirement planning. In me, I don't believe in retirement planning. I believe in being financially independent and being financially free. But retiring just to retire, after 20, 30, 40 years of a body of work, a lifetime of contribution, now you can just kick back and sit back and do nothing with your life, drink Coronas on the beach, flip the channels on the remote and do nothing? Is that what you embody for the rest of your life? Some of you guys say, yeah, I love it, I love it. But yeah, sure, just because you can do that doesn't mean that God says you should do that. So here's a foundational verse I saw also in this, in this book. Pretty insightful when it comes to what's valuable in your life. Let's look at Proverbs chapter 16, verse 16. It reads like this. How much better to get wisdom than gold, to get insight rather than silver? For example, my team was sharing with me a TikTok video with, uh, what's his name, 6 9 Okay? He's throwing around his cash. He's flashing his cars and this thing, and he's talking about, this is my lifestyle, this is my lifestyle. Come to find out, that was a fake video. I'm wondering to myself, is this guy actually seeking wisdom, or is he making a living being a troll? So when you're looking at wisdom and insight, it's better than gold and silver, because you get gold and silver from having wisdom and insight and making better decisions, and more importantly, who you take counsel from to help you make those better decisions. But kings talks about, about being a king. Now, you can be a king of the empire, you can be a king of the universe, but listen, now the way I'm looking at it, be a king of my household. Be a king of business. Be a king of entrepreneurship, be a king in our neighborhood. How does that translate to actual work? Let, let's look at what he says here in Proverbs chapter 16, verse 12. It reads like this. Kings detest wrongdoing, for a throne is established through righteousness. So you may be thinking, you may be thinking that you're sitting on a throne. But you may not be sitting on the throne for a very long time, unless it's built on righteousness. Number two, honesty. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 13, reads like this. The next verse, kings take pleasure in honest lips. They value the one who speaks what is right. Not lies. Not lies. And oftentimes, especially on social media, that's all you see today. People spitting news for their own agenda. People spitting content for their own agenda. Seek what is right if you're truly operating as a king. And number three, patience. Not being a warrior. What? Proverbs chapter 16, verse 32. It reads like this. Better a patient person than a warrior. One with self-control than one who takes a city. And listen, you're talking to the United States Marine here. All we're taught down is to storm the beach and kick down doors and take over the city. But as a patient person, if you really want to be a king and rule with righteousness, it's better to operate in patience than to storm the beach and kick down doors to win the long game. I know there's a difference between battle and war, the little earthly battle, but if you're fighting the spiritual battle, you're, spot, you're fighting the battle of the financial money game, winning in business, prosperity, happiness, and health, patience over being a warrior. And last but not least, it's got for all of us over four years old is showing some form of gray or silver in her hair. I found a little special bonus verse for you and I. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 31, it reads like this. Gray hair is a crown of splendor. It is attained in the way of righteousness. Gray hair is attained in the way of righteousness, baby. Ah! Okay, I've got to thank my twins for that, my family. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Listen, for those of you who have gray hair or silver hair, maybe it's something that you've been doing right. Who knows? But according to King Solomon, 
it is a crown of splendor if you have gray or silver hair. So that being said, how are these verses going to help you make better decisions? I'd love to know. Put it in the comment section below. If you haven't seen our previous other episodes or we're breaking down every proverb, check out these two episodes right here of the Wealth and Wisdom series. With that being said, if this video has provided value to you, please consider hitting like. If you watch a couple of our videos and you haven't done so already, please consider hitting subscribe, hit notifications to be alerted the next time we upload our next video. From Dallas, Texas, I'm your Mighty Smart Guy, and until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and continue to be Mighty Smart today. God bless you.